Today I'm sitting on a three-year-old quarter horse mirror that we're going to be covering some directional training with. So let's have a listen in. So I move my hands equally in the box so when I move over she should go over with me. I'm also going to use my outside leg so it's inside aids to outside and in here I'm lifting her up with me in the rib cage which will lift her back and they naturally will put their head down when their back is lifted which is a good thing because then I can work put some muscle on the top line so I try to take advantage of the horse uh, in their natural abilities of what they will do because we all watch them graze so the nose is down in the grass and they're walking along munching so they can do the same thing under saddle here again outside rain I'm not pulling on the inside rain I have my hand my free hand here holding it but I'm just sliding that rein around on her so there we go so then there she came she came into the bridle a little bit more rounding herself up and coming off the neck rein at the same time so this is this is my sixth ride on this horse so in five rides I've taken a horse that that uh, yes you could plow rein it in other words direct rein the horse in movement so in other words just put the nose where you want her to go so that was, you know, that was fair enough. But she already had a few rides on her with that style of riding. So what I'm looking for now is to make a neck rein, neck reiner out of her. So when I put that rein on, she's to go. And here she's already starting to figure out what I'm after. Now it's, she's a little flat in the turn, so all I'm gonna do is just show her what I want. Now when I bring the nose in, before she was falling in on the right side, so I have to use, and this, on this right rein, she would go in, the shoulders would go into the inside. So here I'm using my inside leg to hold the shoulder and the rib cage up and get her to bend around my leg. And when you do this type of exercise, here, see, there you go, there she's falling in. So here I'm gonna push her back out and pull her a little bit more to get her to bend. Come on. There we go, good. Sometimes their legs get sticky, which is okay. And I'm not gonna, you know, get after her. I'm just gonna keep asking, asking, asking until I get those legs moving again. So here we'll try it to the left. So inside leg, again, to stop that shoulder from dropping, outside rein. This came around very nice. She's softer on this left side than she is on the right. With going backwards and forwards, two-handed to one-handed um, it, it gives you a chance to always evaluate the animal's learn learning curve and also what what can you do different to make them understand um, if you if you've uh, if you're you know you're stuck a little bit so here head eye so we're going to bring her in there we go and she comes back in again. Here, inside leg to outside. And I just slide the rein on them a little bit so they can feel it. And I'm going to just bump with my outside leg a little bit when that rein goes. There we go. And then I'm going to give her a pet. Good girl. Walk, walk. So I don't hurry anything. Things, things happen at a good pace anyway. I'm never really worried about um, you know, educating an animal and how fast it needs to be done because if you take your time and you're consistent in what you ask for, so the communication is always the same, then they, they pick up on it pretty quick. And the other thing is if you upset them and they get tight in the head, the whole body gets tight. So now they're all braced up against you and uh, if there's all this jerking and kicking going on they're already tense because they're waiting they're waiting for that big explosion so so they're not soft and I want them soft see all I got to do is just massage the bit a little bit look at that 
And that's what I want. Because this is, this is a long and low stretch. So in the beginning, when you're, especially when you're warming them up, you want them to stay soft and calm and relaxed. And you want them to stretch out. Okay? But I try to have all that the whole time I'm riding, even when I'm showing them new exercises. Okay, so now we're going to pick her up into the jog. And I can say to her, jog. Give her a little smooch. A little bit of leg. Good girl. So there was a little bit of a reward for her there. And see, I run them on a loose rein as much as I can. I'm not worried about the horse getting away on me. The rein's still in my hand. I can still pick it up whenever I need it. So why do you, why do you need to ride so tight? But especially with what we're doing now. I mean, we're, we're far from having any type of collection. We're not doing dressage at all. And you want to you get all of this down before you start doing anything serious with dressage anyway. And they've got to learn how to get rounded up anyway. Just to give you guys an idea as to what we're looking for with the young horses is this buckskin mare traveling very balanced and upright and rounded working over her back with equal strides on the forehand and the hind with a very nice rhythmic uh, cadence. Ask her to soften up again. Ask her to soften up again. She's pushing on that leg. I'm going to push her out a little bit. Say hey. Give her a little reward there for that. The other thing is I don't want her running around. Any horse can run, so that's never, never a, uh, a problem or an issue because I know they're going to go. There she's coming in again. I'm going to push her out. But I just want her to stay calm and relaxed the whole time and, and concentrate basically on staying between my legs which is the same thing with my hands. I'm not moving my hands around a lot. I just hold my hands in place. Good girl. And when she's relaxed, then I can actually do a little bit more with her there. And if you're pulling a lot and you get them behind the bridle, that's not good either. You want them sitting on the bit. So when you train them up, you need to train them up on the bit. You don't want them behind it, you don't want them in front. I'm always testing them. Now we put the left rein on to see if I can get her to go to the right. There's my neck rein to the right. My right hand is here, hip height, just to see, just in case I need I needed the backup, okay? Because remember, the reins I use as an assistant, like an assistant trainer. Because you want, you want a, good, a good percentage, you know, like a, a, a well-trained bridle horse for me is where I'm riding 90% out of the saddle. Now here she's running away from my leg a little bit. Here, I'm just going to bring her back. She's a little stiff on this side today. And the stiffness, you know, you have to work with it. So tomorrow it could be the left side for whatever the reason, you know? Okay, so here I'm going to see what I want her is I want her to round up. Good. Now we're just going to turn her a little bit tight here, make a smaller circle. I'm going to bring the rein down low. Okay, let's try the other side. So here she's naturally, she's got more flow this side. You can see instantly the way she goes. 
she's smoother a little more rhythm it floats a little more and she just wants to sit there and i'm just giving everything to her i'm staying out of her way it's a, one of the old cowboy sayings to stay out of the way of the horse If the horse gets upset, or you make the horse upset, you might as well get off the horse. And there's a point there where the lesson will end easy, 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 easy. Where the lesson will end because there's nothing going on anymore. You've completely lost the educational point to the lesson. So now we're going to do a little bit of lateral counter. I'm going to grab two hands. This gives me a little more stability. If you open the bridle up a little bit like that, it puts more balance in the bridle. A lot of guys say, oh, I don't know what that does. But that's what happens. You get more open bridle is more of a balanced bridle. And it works. Good. And it's good to post the trot on them. And you can never be afraid to pick up on them and, you know, show extra guidance with them, right? Hey guys, I hope you all enjoy watching Schooling Theory 101 where we covered some of the directional training basics, also introducing balanced rhythmic movement while working over the back. I'd like you guys to stay tuned for my next episode where I'll take you a step further with more depth and insight into working the horse over the back, providing great movement. So stay tuned by subscribing and ringing the bell. If you'd like the video, please give me a thumbs up and please let me know your thoughts by leaving a comment. If you're in the Texas, Oklahoma area, check me out on Google Maps.